Hi, I'm Eagle. I'm a data scientist living in London and welcome to another episode of this time series crash course. In this video, we're going to discuss residuals, particularly how we can use residual analysis to improve our forecasting methods. We will cover what are residuals, how we can do residual analysis and how we can do this all in Python. So let's get into it. On your screen now is a notebook that we're going to work through that will tell us all about residuals and residual analysis inside Python. So kind of like I said just then in the beginning is that being able to analyze your time series is quite important because it allows you to diagnose essentially its performance. And one way of doing this is through residuals of the fitted model. Um, and now we'll go over basically in this video how we can use residual analysis to basically find out what the model's doing and how we can improve it. So let's first start with answering the question, what are residuals? So in time series analysis, residuals are simply the difference between the fitted value, y hat, and the value of the actual value of the time series, which is y. Either or doesn't really matter. And basically, the main key point I want to state between residuals and errors is that, like I've written here, residuals are the difference between the fitted values in the model. And by the fitted values, what we mean is the data that I was actually trained on. So the errors are basically something we're testing on. So the errors are of, of for data the model hasn't seen before. So it's like the performance errors. Whereas the fitted values are the data the model has seen and is simply fitting uh, the it, it to that data. And the fitted values are, are kind of like the difference between what is managed to fit with that model versus to what the actual values are. It's a slight difference, but it's important to remember that if it's a value that's under forecast, they're something that the model's already seen. So they are slightly different. And basically, we can use this analysis of these residuals um, from the multiple time series to detect trends or any inconsistencies in our model that we can improve upon. So the two things we should look for, one is that the residuals should have no autocorrelation or partial autocorrelation, so basically no correlation at all. Because if it has some form of correlation, the model has missed some information in the data. And we can use various tests, such as a young box test and um, histograms to work this out. Then the other one is the mean of the residual should be zero. Otherwise, we'll be biased. So if, for example, the general residuals are kind of shifted to the left or right, positive or negative, then we know we're either under or over forecasting in general. So they should be zero because that means we don't have a bias forecast and we're over forecasting, under forecasting equally. So in other words, we're we you know we're not we're not missing a sort a sort of trick in the data. In reality though, this is quite easy to correct for because we can simply add or subtract this sort of kind of shift in data um, to you know offset this bias in the forecast. So that's the general gist of it. So just to reiterate, basically residuals are the difference between the fitted value and the actual values, and we use them to basically gain some intuition behind what the model's doing and where it can improve upon. So let's now quickly dive straight into the code and just have a kind of a basic uh, model that we can diagnose using this analysis I've just declared here. So we'll first begin with just fitting a regular Holt Winters model. Again, I talked about this model in my previous video, so make sure you check that up. Um, it'll be somewhere on the screen here, so you can look through that in your own time. But it's, it's a basically a um, exponential smoothing model, which takes into account both, oh, but oh, not both, all three things: trend, seasonality, and level. Um, and it kind of like the best exponential smoothing model that you can you can have. And what is all we're going to do here is basically we're going to read in the model, um, read in the data. Again, this is the air passenger data set that we I've had in my previous videos. Don't worry too much about it. It'll be linked in the description below along the Medium article to this video. Um, so you can go through this in your own time if need be. And also this notebook's also linked in the description so you can go over that. We're then going to split and uh, data into test and train. And then we're going to plot it and then fit the model and then plot the function. So again, very simple, nothing too complicated here. You can go over this in your own time. So let's quickly run this code. It may take a while, but here we go. So as you can see here, we have our train set in the blue, test set in the orange, and then the forecast model from the hot winters in the green. Again, the forecast looks pretty good. Um, we've seen this before, so I'm not going to have too much time on it, but if you want to have a full dissection of the hot winters model, make sure you check out other video, um, the previous video in this playlist. Right, 
Now what we can do is that we can find the fitted values and also the residuals uh, by calling this attributes of the model class that we fit above here. And by doing this, we can see the results. So as you can see here, we have our data set. So hashtag passengers is basically the time series we're looking at. Month is the essentially the um, well the the date index of how many passengers flew that month, and then here we have the fitted values. So the basically the value the model fitted to this data point. So you see here it was kind of just above 112, and residual is basically that difference, right? You see here it's minus, um, and so if you if you add these if you add these rows together, you get back to the hashtag passengers. So like I said, fitted values is like the values the models come up with to your training set. It's not the full class of values, which will be the error. And we'll see the residuals here. Now that we have this information, we can do some work with it. So the first one we can do is see some correlation. So as you remember, correlation or autocorrelation is basically the correlation of a series with itself shifted back in time. Again, I've discussed these uh, these like topics in loads of previous videos, so make sure you check those out in this playlist if you are familiar with them. Um, so I'm not going to go over them now. So all we're going to do is we're going to plot the partial autocorrelation function and the autocorrelation function uh, for the residuals. Again, we'll plot the first 30 residuals, not every single one of them. Plotting this, we get the result that looks like this. So as we can see here, the most of the autocorrelations and partial autocorrelations are within the blue shaded region. So in other words, they're not statistically significant, um, which one this blue region signifies. But you may notice there is some sort of pattern here, particularly for both, well, for both really. You see that it kind of oscillates up and down. This is kind of like the yearly sort of seasonality seen in data it's above here, right? You see like it kind of goes up and down at a yearly level, like every 12 data points. And same thing with the partial correlation, there's some sort of, you know, it's, it's, there is a, a little form of correlation there that we can see. Um, and a better way of basically quantifying if there is indeed correlation in residuals is through this young box test. And so what this test does is a non statistical test, don't worry too much about it, uh, but it's going to test whether, you know, the null hypothesis is that the residuals are independently distributed. So in other words, they are random variables, no correlation. So we kind of want our values be above, well, you know, within the non-significance level. And H1 means the residuals are not independently distributed and they have some sort of zero correlation. So in other words, we want our values to be, you know, above or above the plus or minus 5% kind of region. And we can simply carry out the Young box test using the stats models package here. And then we just call it autocorrelation on box again beauty of python a lot of these things are done for us so it's really neat and then we're just gonna call it on our residuals and this is what we get so what you notice here is that it's kind of saying that we there is a sort of correlation within our data because all a lot of these residuals are in the pretty much uh, significant, low significance level zone right this is kind of like 0.07 percent 0.05 percent so like, I, like I've written here, they are all below the significance level of 0.05, 5%. Therefore, we reject our null hypothesis of no autocorrelation. So there is correlation present in our residuals that we need to revisit within the model. So again, as an example, there is some sort of correlation there, so we need to rethink that if we're going to refit this model. But this gives you an idea of how you would diagnose it using um, the correlation and also the young box test. All right. So the next thing we look at is whether they're biased or not. And by doing that, we can just simply plot a histogram. So we're going to call this plotly function and just do a histogram of the residuals, some formatting, and we can show the results. So as you can see, the residuals are pretty reasonably kind of zero centered. They're pretty symmetrical around that zero point. Overall, the mean, as I as declared here, is slightly negative. So in other words, it is negatively forecasting slightly. Very small though, very small margin. You know, our data is kind of in the hundreds of levels, right? Our passengers are very much in like 100 to 600 range. And so, you know, an error or a general bias of 0.02, it's not that great really if you think about it. So again, like always, you can always, you know, um, do an offset if you want to nullify the effect of this. But to be honest, I think here, it, we don't need to do much in that and the data is fitting or the model is fitting to the data um, pretty equally and being unbiased. 
Let's quickly recap of the key points discussed in this video. Residuals are the difference between the fitted values and the actual values, and are frequently used to determine where our model may be struggling. For example, the residuals can identify things such as autocorrelation and a bias in the forecasting model, and therefore we can correct this when we're rebuilding our forecasting model. This is really useful because it allows you to understand what the model's doing and better diagnose it, and so you can improve its forecast in the next iteration. As we saw with the Python tutorial, this analysis is very easy to do, and I would definitely recommend you apply it for those of you building forecasting models. If you enjoyed this video and want to learn more about time series and forecasting, then make sure you check out our other videos in this playlist. Also to like, comment and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.